let's turn our Bibles to Book of Ecclesiastes. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. We'll look at verses 13 and 14. Familiar verses to many. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. The title of the message is, The Best Thing to Keep in Mind. The Best Thing to Keep in Mind. The Best Thing to Keep in Mind. Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. The Bible says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Brother Bogey, can you please pray for the message? Thank you, Lord, for uh, your goodness and mercy, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to gather here today. And uh, so good to be saved, Lord. And uh, uh, considering all that, Lord, I thank you for uh, your Bible believing, preaching, and teaching, Lord. Thank you for this church. Yes. And uh, I just pray and ask, Lord, uh, uh, now, Lord, would you please uh, fill the preacher with your uh, Holy Spirit and then please minister to our hearts and fill us with, with the Holy Spirit uh, so we may heed uh, to what you have to say, Lord. And uh, I just want to uh, pray and ask, Lord, um, please fill this place with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and I uh, pray, Lord, that you're the most welcome uh, person here, Lord. Yes, we need you. I need you. Amen. Personally, I need you. And, uh, and I pray, Lord, that this uh, message would uh, just convict our hearts yes, to yes. Uh, fear you. Amen. Uh, uh, Amen. Fear, fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, Amen. Lord. And, uh, uh, I need that kind of wisdom. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 The best thing to keep in mind. We keep a lot of things, you know, in our mind on a daily basis. Even right now, you know, as you're listening to this message, as I'm preaching, everyone has certain things in their mind. And based on the type of things that's on your mind, you know, either you're going to be successful or you're going to be failing. Whatever you have on your mind, you're gonna, it's going to help you get closer to the Lord, or it's going to keep you away from the Lord. If you have things of, the God, things of God, if you have Word of God you know, in your mind constantly, then you're going to be closer to the Lord. If you don't, then you're going to be further away from the Lord. So the best thing to keep in mind according to the Word of God right now, I see in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, is that fear God and keep His commandments. I mean, if you ever need a, you know, like a model, if you ever need to have a Bible verse there, somewhere in your house, you know, that's a great verse. Fear God and keep his commandments. You know, as, you know, Brother Bogey prayed, you know, when you fear God, a lot of things work out for you. When you don't fear God, a lot of things will not work out for you. So the best thing to keep in mind is to fear God right away, right? You have to fear God. I mean, that's point one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, point one, two, you know, infinity. You fear God. Why did, you know, Lucifer fall? Because he didn't fear God. Why did Adam and Eve fall? Because at the end of the day, you know, doctrinally stuff, you could go deep with Adam's love for Eve and everything, but the fear of God left their heart. When you and I fall into sin constantly, and we're not right with the Lord, it's because one reason, one simple reason, because you and I do not fear God. Yeah. If we were to fear God in every aspect of our life, we would not be such a, how should I say, pitiful. You know, we would not be such a shameful. We would not be such a failure as a Christian. You have to remember that everybody goes to certain type of failures in their life. You even look at Apostle Peter, you know, he said, I'm going to die for you, Lord. But Lord said, you know, you're going to deny me thrice, you know, before the cock crows. No, man, and don't tell me you're better than Apostle Peter, right? I mean, don't tell me you're better than those, you know, apostles out there or the disciples. Don't tell me you're even better than Solomon, the wisest person who asked God for wisdom, and this guy had everything. He had everything. I mean, he had all the women that he wanted in the world. He had all the possession in the world. 
the queens and kings of the world came to see him because he was the wisest person. But he fell away, right? And at the end of the day, he said, even though I had all the possession in the world, think about it. You know, are you jealous of someone like Jeff Bezos or, you know, Elon Musk or, you know, the Facebook guy or any of those guys? I mean, are you jealous of someone with a lot of possessions in their life? Look at Solomon. Are you jealous of someone with, you know, spouse that you don't have, right? Hopefully not, right? Every Bible-believing Christian, if you're married, your spouse should be the most beautiful woman. Your husband should be the handsomest man, right? Your eyes should not wander in any way. But this person, you know, thousand women. One's hard, right? But this guy, thousand, right? And he's hearing it from everybody. If you hear from one person, I mean, you guys are laughing, but, you know, probably because through your experience. Because a lot of men, you know, because of your own faults, you know, admit it, yes. right? Not your wise fault. 99% of the time, it's because of your fault sure. you yes. get into trouble, right? And yes. you, it's hard for you to admit it. And sometimes when you get to hear the, you know, right stuff, you know, your body cannot handle it. Your flesh cannot handle it. But Solomon was hearing it from everybody, good and the bad, you know, because he was hearing from the worldly side as well. And after all the possessions in the world, all the people in the world, all the luxury in the world, what did he say? Did he say, you know, best thing to keep in mind is blah, 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 you know, how to create wealth and keep wealth, you know? I mean, if Warren Buffett is your idol, something's wrong with you, right? You know? I mean, some people, uh, you talk to a Bible-believing so-called Christian, and their role model is like some unsaved person. It's like, oh, yeah, that's my role model, right? I mean, what's wrong with you, right? Yeah. And some people aren't even in the Word of God. So they're like, hey, my role model is Delilah. You know, I love naming my kid Delilah, right? And some people don't know the Bible. They're like, yeah, my favorite character is Saul. You know, first king, you know, I love Saul. You know, he was uh, what, like eight feet tall, you know, he was handsome. But you don't really know who the Saul was, right? I mean, so when people say, I've done everything, and this is one thing that I want to keep in my mind, I mean, that is a very important thing. That's like your legacy, right? What would you say when you're about to die? I mean, did you even think about it? You know, probably like, oh, man, I need some time to think about it. Yeah, of course. But isn't this the best thing to say? You know, General Booth, you know, he said, you know, think about others, right? That's very important. But you're not going to think about others unless you fear God. You're not going to love others unless you fear God. Seriously, a lot of times, people think about doing good of the man before fearing God. That's why the world is in this mess. People say, oh, let's have a hunger drive. Or I mean, people say, let's help the homeless. You know, all good intentions, right? But why do you do it in the first place? Is it because you fear God? Because you want to spread the gospel to them? Or because you want to look good? And a lot of companies do that everywhere. It's, it's like a brownie points, right? Yes. You know, CEOs go out there. I'm, I mean, some CEOs are very genuine, I know for sure, right? But some of them are out there just like politicians, shaking hands, take photos, and that's it. Yes. And your Christian life shouldn't be that politician life. Amen. It shouldn't be like a pretending. It shouldn't be hypocritical. If you're genuinely fearing God, none of this should matter what other people think. You shouldn't care about what your flesh thinks. You know, a lot of times you think about your own flesh so much that you stop fearing God. Even today, right? Everything that you do, all these things that is driven by you is because of your flesh. Don't tell me it's because of Lord Jesus Christ. Don't tell me because I fear God. I don't think so, right? 
I mean, your attitude, you know, think about it. What is your attitude towards the word of God? I mean, he said with fear, right? I mean, do you fear the word of God? I'm sure you love the word of God, right? But do you fear the word of God? Because if you really love the Lord, and if you really say, I will give up my life to him or for him, number one thing, you do it because you fear him. God is a jealous God, right? And he's holy God. And how in the world are you going to expect a happy Christian life if you don't fear him every day? Just rewind. You know, to, I mean, we're in fall. When you think about summer, you know, when you think about spring of this year, all the times that you didn't have good days, right, as Christian, if you're saved, you didn't have good days, I guarantee you, because you didn't fear God that day. I mean, if you fear God, there's no way you're going to have a bad day, literally. Even with the bad days, it's a good day because you know he is to be feared, and because you fear him, everything that happens in your life is to give glory to him because you fear him. You know, a lot of times children who love their parents, they fear them in a godly fearing manner because I know that I love my dad so much, I love my mom so much, and they raised me the right way according to the word of God. And I fear them because if I do something wrong, then I'm going to be punished. But do you ever even think about the punishment that's waiting for you? I mean, a lot of Christians, you're so foolish. It's like, you know what, I'll just live my life like YOLO life, right? You know, you only live once. You know, I mean, Christians are living a YOLO life. Yeah. I mean, that's sad to see. It's like, you know, you don't give your all to anything except your own pleasure. True. Like, concentrating in the Word of God, you don't give your all, right? And then, if it's going to please your parents that you get a good grade, you're going to give your all. Because your parents are going to talk to other parents about your grades, right? But your parents, I don't think they're going to talk to other people about your spiritual life, per se. Because they themselves don't have the best spiritual life, you know? It's like you can't stand up for something and you can't be really strong and courageous about it if you have your own faults with it. Because, you know, can I tell you to not steal if I'm stealing at the same time? It's like you see me out there, you know, robbing CVS, you know, all those Walgreens. Then I come to you on the pulpit, hey, do not steal from CVS and Walgreens. In the back of me, there's a news plane with my face up there, you know. You know, one of the culprits there. So that just tells you. It just tells you one thing for sure is that you, your priority. I mean, we talk about priorities all the time because it's very important. What is your purpose in life, right? We're not talking about that crook talking about purpose-driven life, right? You know, I mean, that's, uh, that ruins people. You know, but we're talking about real purpose in your life, right? To me, our purpose should be fearing God. Why? Because when you fear God, all this word, every single word, you know, every punctuation mark really comes to you. Why? Because when you fear God, you're going to sin less. You got to stop sinning. You're like, how do I stop sinning? You know, my flesh is so strong. There are too much temptations in the world. Just fear God. I mean, if God was standing right in front of you and you know, according to the word of God, he's going to punish you and chastise you as a child of God, you're not going to do it. Yeah. How can you, right? In front of an almighty God, you're not going to do it. But funny thing is, since you can't see him, what are you doing? You just do it. It's like it's not really real to you. You know what? I'll fear God a little bit later in my life. Man, right now, it's too busy. I got to fear man. You know, I got my... You know, money problem, I got my relationship problem, I got a work, co-worker problem, I got, you know, my marriage problem, I got children problem. You know what? I have to resolve all this. So, fearing God means that I have to look at this, believe this, go through all this. Then, you know what? I have to put it aside. And I got to put it in the back. So, 
during this action, it's almost like you turn the lights off as if no one can see you, right? You know, in total darkness, yeah, I can't see. You know, I don't have a night vision. But you're forgetting God can see everything. Yes. I mean, what does the Bible say? God shall bring every work into judgment. Every work. Think about it. That's scary stuff. I mean, we see judgments that are Christ in 2 Corinthians you know, chapter 5, verse 10. Every work. Do you think that when your secrets are revealed, you'll be a happy camper? No. I mean, there's going to be good secrets. Very few, right? You're leading people to the door, left and right. You know, you're helping your brethren, and you don't want anybody to know. You want to give glory to God. Man, those are good. You know, like you read your Bible every single day out of your heart. You know, you went through the Word of God like 10 times in a year. You're not out there to tell nobody. You know, you just want to get closer to the Lord. You know, those are good. But how many of you have that kind of secret compared to all this bad secret? And this bad secret is what? It's all about your sin, right? Your sin. It's like right now, it's very important for you to focus and realize, what am I doing with sins in my life? Right? If you fear God, you're going to resolve it on yes. the spot. But if you don't fear God, you're just going to let it linger. You're just going to let it go. I mean, that's why the, when you hear the word sin, it doesn't really touch you. It's just another word. It's like a bread. It's like a chair. It's like a paper. You know, it's just another word. But godly people, if you truly fear God, sin must be the most significant word to you. Because sin determines whether you're close to the Lord or not. Amen. Sin determines whether you read the Bible or not. Sin determines whether you go out there and witness or not. And it all comes back to fear of the Lord. Yes. Bible clearly tells you, right, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. And you know it. But you're a liar, though. You commit sin all the time. And you're telling God, I'm sorry, but you do it again. Yes. I mean, was that a sincere, you know, confession of sin? Was that a true repentance? If you're doing it over and over and over and again? No. I mean, if you, for example, the kid goes, Daddy, I love you. I'm not going to steal anymore. And I'm not going to go to the, you know, markets and stuff and just grab a candy and gum and just put it in my pocket because you know I don't like that whipping that you gave me but you know what because I fear you and I love you but you do it the next day you say the same thing daddy I love you you know I'm not gonna do it again because I fear you and you do it again and again so within a week you did it five times and then you tell the same old story Man, Dad, you know, I couldn't resist. I mean, is that your excuse all the time? I just couldn't resist, you know, Lord. You know, that temptation that's coming my way, all those tests that you're giving me, I just couldn't say no. I mean, wow. I mean, Lord had to go through every temptation to save you and I. Yeah. And he has given us guarantee, according to 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that we could endure those temptations, right? We could defeat those temptations. Yes. That's what the Word of God says. But it's like you're spitting on God's face, yes. right? You know what? I love you, but I'm going to spit at your face because I'm going to do it again. <laughs> and it was one of the worst acts of human being to another person. Spitting at their face, yeah. right? I mean, when you're so disgusted with another person, what do you do? Some people can't control their anger or their emotions, so they just spit on their face, right? I mean, you see it sometimes, you know, friends do that to each other, spouses do that to each other, you know, enemies do that to each other. And, you know, it's like the worst thing that you could feel. Someone else's spit on your face, and you know? But you're doing that to God on a constant basis. Yes. Yeah, you're like playing games. You know, a lot of people, when you don't fear God, your life is all about playing games, right? I have a game to play here, 
and I have a game to play at the church, and I have game to play at work, I have game to play at home. It's like you're never genuine. You're never truthful. You're never honest. Typical Christian who does not fear God, they're very good liars. And you are one of them. Because are you going to tell me that I never lie? No. I mean, are you going to tell God that, God, I never lie? You're like, hey, preacher, I never lie. I never lied to my wife. I never lied to my husband. I never lied to my children. I, need, I don't even lie to myself. I mean, you're a bunch of, I mean, you're, you're the biggest liar. Amen. It's like someone, when we go witnessing, you know, the Bible says everyone's a sinner. Yes. You know, do you know you're a sinner? No, I'm not a sinner, right? It's like you ask him, you know, the Bible says you're a liar. No, I never lie. Now you, you see some crazy people out there. And you are that liar that constantly speaks at God's face over and over and over. Like even right now, you're like, God, I'm going to give all my heart to you. I love coming to church on a Sunday. I love the word of God. I love the fellowship. Man, but right outside the church, even right now, your mind is thinking about what am I going to eat tonight? Where am I going to go today? You know, man, this coming week's going to be tough. You know, what, what am I going to do? You know, I mean, like no respect. I mean, f- forget about the word respect. No fear of God at all. Yes. Right? When, I mean, during the World War II and during any war, whether there's you know, just massacres and genocide. When people hear certain words, it brings fear to their face. It brings fear to their whole being, right? I mean, think about Holocaust, you know? Think about Cambodian, you know, genocide, you know, all the stuff. And if you hear those things and you've gone through it, man, it's like, wow, you can't, when you hear it, it triggers. Because you could, you could suddenly think how people get killed. I mean, think about it. You know, during Cambodian genocide, it's one of the worst, right? If you study the history, I mean, millions of people were killed. And they have a place where it's like a concrete wall. You can't really hear the scream unless you open the door but you could still hear it. Why? Even though it was made like that, because pain was too much. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, you're standing, they put a live rats on your head, you know, in a box, and then they just eat you alive. You know, your eyes, your nose, your ears, right? And obviously, there's certainly, definitely other stuff that they do to, as a, to a human being that you could only imagine, right? But they do those wicked imagination, imaginative things. They put it into reality. I mean, think about Holocaust and all those, you know, medical experiments everywhere. Yes. So when they hear it, they have this fear. Like they tell you, don't ever talk about it, man. Don't ever talk about it. They do say they're writing, say they're cooking, you know, they're doing whatever. When they hear, they just stop whatever they're doing. And you know what they tell you? They're like, I do not want to hear. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to talk about it, right? Why? Because they fear it so much. But when it comes to fearing God, you don't have anything closer to that. When you think about sin, you don't care about that. You don't even confess your sins, you know, daily basis. You don't confess your sins at all. And how do you know? Because you know it by the fruits, If you truly are someone that's serious about fearing God, you wouldn't do the same thing that you do. I mean, isn't it? I mean, like, if a kid fears a parent and they really love their parent, and they're not going to do certain things that their parents don't like. And God has slew up things in the Word of God. He said, don't do it. It's not gray area, just don't do it. What's the famous one we always say? Abstain from all appearance of evil. If you fear God, you're going to run away. Amen. Run away from sin. Yes. You're going to run away from all evil. You know, instead of, 
you know, debating over it. <laughs> it's like you're playing with fire. Okay. Hmm. This fire is going to burn eventually. You know, it might burn 10 seconds from now, or it might burn five minutes from now. But you know what? Hmm, I'm just going to take my chances. Sometimes it takes a while for it to burn. But sometimes God says, you know what? Mercy is gone in your life. And that's when, you know, you see a lot of Christians die early in their life. Why? If you live after the flesh, you shall die. Romans 8.13. So if you're going to live after the flesh and not fear God, what's the conclusion you're going to have? Die early. People say, I hate my life. I want to die early. Oh, yeah? Just live after the flesh. That's what the Bible says, right? Yeah. But don't go out there like say, oh, Pastor Jay told me to just die, so I'm going to go out and commit sin all my life. You know, that's being stupid, right? Don't do what God told you not to do in the Word of God. That's fearing God. Amen. You're like, how do I fear God? I don't know what to do. Just do what the Bible says, right? That's all you have to do. Why? Because second part says what? Fear God and keep his commandments. Keep the word of God. That's all you got to do. That shows that you're fearing God. I mean, if you truly respect someone, if you love someone, you're going to listen to him and you're going to actually put it into action. Yes. <laughs> you can't just tell your husband and wife, I love you. And then you don't do anything that they like. You do everything they hate, right? I mean, say your wife hates you watching sports 10 hours a day, <laughs> right? They're like, hey, let's spend some time together. Let's do some things together. Like, I love you. I already told you I love you every hour. This is, my, this is my 10th hour. So after this, I'll spend some time with you. But by that time, you're too tired. Like, all right, let's go to sleep, you know? And then start the thing over. Or even wives too, right? You know, oh yeah, I, here's some food. I got to do my thing. And then that's it. But I love you, right? You know, I love you. I mean, what is charity all about, right? You know, sacrifice, love in action. But you don't show it. You don't do it. So typically, when you don't fear God, all the time. You don't obey the Bible at all. That's it. Yeah. And if you haven't been obeying the word of God, if you're just living in sin, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know this. You don't have to, you know, understand, you know, some theories out there. You did not fear God. That's it. Simple. A lot of times, you have to keep that in mind. Only reason you're hearing this and I'm hearing this is because we don't do it. Amen. You don't keep it in your mind. And don't be a liar. Let's be, you know, at the end of the day, anyone who has a chance in their life are people who are honest. You know, people who are transparent. And especially people who are honest and transparent with the Lord. I mean, Lord's in you. Think about it. Yes. He saved you and he died for you. He's supposed to be your best friend. But he's also your advocate. I mean, the best person in the world. But you don't even talk to him. You don't share anything with the Lord. You only go to the Lord when you need something. Lord, you know, I'm not saying this is bad, but when, anytime when things go wrong, that's when you go to the Lord. Lord, Where's my money? Lord, where's my this? Lord, where's my this? You know. I mean, even health. You know, I pray for you know, our brethren whose health is not doing good. But have you ever been to the Lord before your health were failing, right? So you healthy people got to watch out. I mean, if you take anything for granted and you don't fear God, God could take it away just like that, just to get your attention, right? You know, Dr. Rockman, someone asked him, someone came you know, to Dr. Rockman, and this guy goes, you know, Dr. Rockman, now I'm going to enjoy my life like you did. You know, and you got saved at 
age 27. So this was a young guy, and they came with the girlfriend. Right? And then Dr. Ruckman says, don't take chances. God showed me some mercy, right? He might not show that greater mercy to you, yes. and you might die. I mean, he was about to blow, himself, blow his brains out before he got saved. Because he like experienced everything that life offers. And I don't know about you, where you are at your stage, right? I mean, are you trying to experience everything that life offers? I mean, ah, you know, I teach my kid. And this is a stupid thing parents do, right? There are certain levels of freedom that you have to give them so that they could make mistakes and they could get, learn from it, right? But you don't give them, you know, free reign ever. Yeah, they need to go to a party. No. They need to go to a party. You know, they need to drink some alcohol. You know, they need to get with boys and girls and just realize that that's not the way to do it. If you know it's not the way to do it, why even let them do it in the first place? Yeah. Right? Then... If you're a grown-up, you should ask yourself. You already know the answer. I shouldn't do it. How many of you guys truly think that when you commit sin, you didn't know? I mean, like, I didn't know. Maybe rarely. There's very few exceptions when you're so naive, you know. Maybe you came out of the woods, you know, you lived there for 30 years, you know, you just came back out. Like, you don't know anything, right? You're so innocent. You have, like, such a childlike mind and stuff, right? That, yeah, yeah, here and there. But for majority of the people, you know what you're doing. Amen. 100%. Yes. And when you're committing sin, you know exactly what you're getting into. Yes, sir. And you know you're not supposed to do it. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit, if you're saved, is convicting you. And if you're committing sin, even right now in your mind, and there's no conviction at all, you know, you might have to check something. Amen. You know, you might have to check. And if you, if Lord did not give you any attention to it, you better check too. I mean, some people do say, you know, my conscience is seared with hot iron and stuff. I mean, maybe some backslidden Christians, like their soul gone deep down. Maybe they, nothing even matters to them. But for majority, you're getting that conviction. Holy Spirit conviction. Yes. Don't do it. Fear God. That's what the Bible says. Every work that you do will be judged. Every secret work, right? Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 8. It's very important for you and I to understand. If we do fear God, the secret things that we do will be godly things instead of worldly, fleshly things, sinful things. Luke chapter 8, verse 17. So don't think that you could get away with things, you know, essentially. You reap what you sow. You know it. Don't you know that you're going to reap it one day? Why do you do it? Why do I do it? Because you don't fear God. Because I don't fear God. Simple as that. Yes. If you and I truly fear God, we wouldn't do it. We wouldn't sin. Because we're going to reap horribly. I mean, don't take it as a joke or anything. Don't take it lightly. If you don't get right with the Lord, imagine you're still going to reap what you sow, but you're going to reap much, much more. I mean, that's a scary thing. You're going to pay for it. God is fair, God. He has to judge you accordingly to his word. Let's look at Luke chapter 8, verse 17. The Bible says, for nothing is secret. Again, brethren, nothing. Every sin that you're concealing is going to be revealed one day. Yes. It is going to, so get rid of all the sin problems. Get rid of your sins because it's going to be revealed. Everything that you've been doing on your own, by yourself, in darkness, in light, or wherever, is going to be revealed. And you better thank God that God has given you enough mercy to conceal it from other people, to bring bad testimony. Because he's trying to still protect our local church with good testimony. Yes. We're body of Christ. If you mess up, it's going to, impact and affect all the body of Christ. Think about it. If I'm walking around, if there is a cut here and blood is dripping, people are going to notice, right? Yes. Especially like, you know, I'm touching my face and then there's a blood dripping. People are going to notice. Your sins will be noticed. 
it's going to be noticed sooner than later. Because don't play games with God. Let's look at Luke 18, 17 again. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. I'm sorry, brethren. You could be the best spy in the world. You could be the best, you know, I don't know, magician, mime worker you think you are. But no. Bible says everything will be revealed one day. The thing is, it could be today. Can you handle every sin that you've committed that you've been hiding all this time gets revealed to everybody all at once? You can. If that were to happen, probably some of you are going to kill yourself because you can't handle it. Yes. Why do you think people commit suicide many times? Because they can handle it especially those who commit horrible crimes, which you do on a daily basis to the body of Christ, and they realize it, they think that, man, instead of getting right, paying for your sins, spending time in jail, you know, no, I'm going to end it early. I'm just going to blow my brains out. And they think it's over. No, there's judgment waiting for them. Same thing with you. You think, Oh, I'm just going to wait it out. I'm just going to wait it out. Oh, fear God? Yeah, 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 I will. I'm going to wait it out, wait it out. And suddenly, boom, the Lord reveals to your wife, your husband, your children, your co-workers, your entire church, that everything that you've been doing in secret. If that day comes, I don't know if you'll be here anyways, right? I don't know if I'll be here because... You've gone so far in your sins and backslidden state. Probably it's going to be one of the most difficult things for you, you to come back from. So before that happens, why don't you get right with the Lord? Amen. Before that happens, why don't you fear God? Yes. Before that happens, why don't you obey His commandment? Before that happens, when you hear the word sin, that should be the most cringe word. I mean, cringe wordy. That's like the word that you don't want to associate yourself ever. Because for many Christians, sin is part of their vocabulary. Sin is part of everyday life. And they don't care about it. You know what? I can't help you. It's got to be from you. If you're serious about getting right with the Lord, praise God. If you're not serious about getting right with the Lord, you know what? Just take your chances. You know, it's the worst chance you could take. Yes. You know, besides from people rejecting gospel over and over, thinking that they'll accept the Lord next day or month from now, year from now, you as a Christian playing with sin, that fire, and expecting God to show you mercy continuously, man, it's going to, as they say, bubbles going to pop one day. Yes. And when that thing pops, man, you're going to reap more than you could ever imagine. Your life will be completely over, yes. upside down. That's why the Bible says, fear God and keep yes. his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. The best thing to keep in mind right now, if all these sinful texts are coming to you, I'm going to fear God. Flesh, the world, the devil, I don't care. I'm going to fear God. Yes. And if I fear God, I'm going to keep his commandments. That means I'm going to run away from all the sins. Amen. I'm going to stand up against you know, anything that's evil. And I'm going to stand up for my Lord and Savior. Because yes. when you fear God, you're not going to fear man. Right? That's the conclusion. Amen. But when you fear man, you will never fear God. Right. Where are you today? Are you fearing God or fearing man? Is fear of God in your mind today? Let's pray. Dear Father, as Christians, it is given an expected thing from you, Lord, that we fear you. You're the creator of the universe. You're omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. You live within us. I mean, with our small brains and limited IQ and knowledge, we try to understand and we try to you know, 
be what you want us to be, but we always come short, Lord, because at the end of the day, because we don't fear you, Lord. We say we do, but our actions do not show it. Lord God, help us not to be just talkers. Help us not to be hypocrites. Help us not to be those secret sinners outside of church or in front of people. Help us to come to you and get right with you because I would rather have my secret revealed to you and get right with you and start over than keep on hiding it and be judged openly, Lord. Amen. And that will bring a bad testimony to your body, to the local church, to the family, anybody. Help us to take this seriously, Lord. When it comes to sin, Lord, we take it so lightly, Lord. We could just play with it, and then we just throw it away, and then before it explodes, Lord. But that day might be today, Lord. That day might be tomorrow. Help us not to play around with your mercy and the grace that you've shown us. Help us get serious about it. Help us to really, really get right with you, Lord, because the warnings could stop now, and with that afterwards, we might be reaping right away. And if we did live after the flesh, some of us might just die, Lord. We don't want to come to that, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to get right with you, Lord. Help us to get right. Help us to fear you. Help us to keep your commandments and be that good testimony for you to the lost souls out there. Help us have that conviction and the courage and boldness because we fear you and keep your commandment, go out there and reach lost souls out there for you, Lord. Bless the rest of the service today. And above all, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.